How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake and welcome to this Star or Shovelware mini review of Draw a Stickman Epic 2, an adventure puzzle game where you get to draw your very own Stickman who then becomes the main protagonist of the game. You then embark on a quest to save a stick person village from an evil villain by using different pencils to manipulate elements within the world and solve puzzles. So Draw a Stickman Epic 2 is a mobile to switch port where it actually feels right at home with its cartoony visuals and touchscreen controls. We begin the game by creating our character by drawing on a canvas using a selection of colours and brush sizes. Now I was using the thumbstick to draw in this review which is why my character and drawings are pretty atrocious, but touchscreen allows much more control over the cursor. After creating my carrot topped hero who I named Brian. I then got to create myself a friend, a rather simple looking chap who I decided to call Blue. Being the adventurous type that he is, Blue wanted to explore, but then disaster strikes as a vial of purple goo topples off the easel onto him, transforming him into a monstrous creature. Blue then goes a bit mental and turns up a magical book before jumping into its pages and we give chase and follow on after him. We're then taken to the game's title screen where we see our character and a mutated looking blue who becomes the game's main bad guy. And the game actually contains two stories for us to play through, beginning with the main game where the aim is to find a key to gain access to blue's castle. We find ourselves in a barren looking landscape where we acquire our first pencil. The leaf pencil allows us to draw, or scribble in my case, leaves onto trees. Hitting A when we're done, the sticks will then sprout leaves, clearing away the dangerous purple slime around them. Now we don't actually get a weapon to begin with and must instead utilise trees to defeat the purple slime enemies we meet, which often requires us to get their attention and then lure them towards nearby trees. Now when you start drawing, gameplay slows down and this is really helpful especially when time is of the essence and you're trying to draw quickly using the thumbstick. Taking damage from enemies removes a heart's worth of health seen in the top left, but enemies drop hearts when defeated which can restore your health and as you play you can find crystal heart containers which increase your max health. So the aim in each mission is to find the torn pages which will then unlock the next level. In addition to the pages there are plenty of secret areas to find containing hidden collectibles which include small furry colour buddies who unlock additional colours for your sketchbook and jigsaw pieces which piece together a puzzle if you collect all 14 of them. As you progress through the game you unlock new brush types which you have to utilise to solve puzzles and work through each level. The wire brush allows you to draw cables to create a connection between batteries and various objects in the world such as minecarts and electrical trees. The cloud brush lets you create rain clouds which can then be used to water trees and make them larger increasing their area of effect. The ice brush allows you to turn pools of water into ice and freeze enemies and the egg brush creates eggs which hatch into birds who transport you between different locations in the level. Now you also get a number of different tools throughout the game including a pickaxe and we're able to design each of our tools by sketching them out though yet again my drawing skills are sadly lacking. As is the case with any of the sketches you create in game though, you're able to save multiple versions and switch between them as you please. You can also give one version of an item to an NPC and equip the other yourself, which is sometimes required at specific points within levels. Now when it comes to the levels, there's some decent variation, and while the majority of them revolve around the village and completing different scenarios, each level presents its own set of challenges and puzzles to work through, usually requiring the use of a newfound brush. Some levels require you to help out the villagers with different tasks, or others like the mines level are much more focused on puzzle elements. The majority of the puzzles in the game are pretty straightforward and there's nothing overly challenging, and there's no blood or real violence in the game which makes it ideal for younger children. Children. Now in addition to the main storyline we also get Drawn Below mode, which follows on from the events of the main game. In this mode we find ourselves in what appears to be a castle dungeon where all of our brushes get stolen by some tentacles. We then need to work our way through the dungeon to retrieve them whilst wielding our trusty sword and Down Under features more of a metroidvania style of gameplay where we have to move back and forth between rooms once we acquire the required brushes. So overall I thought Draw a Stickman Epic 2 was a really well thought out game and while its drawing mechanics were pretty simple, it had some fun puzzling elements and I liked how the different brushes were implemented into these. So now it's time to rate the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars with the shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of gameplay a title offers and whether or not I believe it offers value for money to potential buyers. 
and for a rating I'd give Draw a Stickman Epic 2, 3 out of 5 stars. While gameplay might not have enough depth and be too simple for some adults, I think that kids would have a great time playing it, providing they're not yet accustomed to games like Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. You can get the game from the UK Switch eShop where it's usually priced at £6.99, or from the US eShop for $6.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Steam. And that about wraps up this mini review. Hit that like button if it helped you out, and let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified of future Switch content and reviews, and join the Star Seekers Discord to become part of its growing community. For now, though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, game on.